Welcome back everyone to the ITVersity YouTube channel and as part of the Apache Kafka for beginners from zero to hero playlist today we are going to discuss something really important and that is nothing but partitions and replications inside Kafka how Kafka is super fast at the same time super fault tolerant now before we jump into this video in case if you have not subscribed to our channel please consider doing so let's begin okay so so far we understood about topics now i want you to pay attention to this diagram now don't worry if, if you feel like too confused oh my god there are like so many things in this i'm going to explain this step by step don't worry but this diagram is very important to understand the internals of kafka so we are picking the same example and you can see four brokers are there there are two producers and one consumer and as of now for the interest of this topic we are concentrating on the producer that's a web server and the consumer that is spark so imagine we are only talking about consuming the data that is produced by the web server right now as my explanation in the previous video my point was that the web server can send the data to a topic and that topic will be stored in one of the broker and then Spark can consume that from that broker from by connecting to or subscribing to that topic, right? This looks fine, but there is a problem. See, in the real world, we, we simply say producer, but in the real world, if you look at it, these are actual systems and they might be producing huge amount of data. I mean, think about a real world scenario like an e-commerce company and this web server may be hosting their e-commerce website. And maybe there are hundreds of web servers who are producing the data and sending to this topic. So a question naturally arises, what if the producers are generating so much data that eventually the broker becomes full? Now remember, whatever data that the producer is sending, it lands on one of the uh, you know broker, right? We define the topic and it lands on one of the broker, right? Now what if that broker eventually becomes full for example this is what i'm talking about so in my previous scenario the web server is sending the data to uh, broker zero now in broker zero you have a b c d e f that's fine but what if there are hundreds of web servers sending data so that this broker zero eventually becomes full another problem is broker zero might be able to store the data but what if there are so many consumers connecting and trying to read the data then broker zero will become a bottleneck. We don't want that to happen. And we know that Kafka is having a distributed design, right? So it is by default uh, having this distributed design. So this is where we can leverage the power of distributed computing to solve these kind of problems. So how does Kafka solve this problem? This is how it is going to solve the problem. So when you are creating a topic in Kafka, look at this picture on the uh, bottom left corner, you can see the topic is web. And then I mentioned something called partitions and replication. So as of now, don't worry about replication. As of now, look at partitions. So I have mentioned partitions equal to three. Now, what does this mean? So when I say partitions equal to three, it basically means whatever data the producer is sending can be equally divided and stored on three brokers. Now there is like conditions apply when I say equally divided, but that's the base idea. So rather than using a single broker to store the data, now I can use three brokers. So whatever data that the producer is sending can be distributed among three brokers. Now my topic spans across three brokers, not one. And look at the picture now. So what is the data that the web server is sending? <clears throat> It is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And now it is using broker 0, 1, 2. And look at the blue boxes. Don't worry about the red. Look at the blue boxes. The way it works is by default, there will be a round robin fashion. That means the web server or the producer is going to send the message A to broker 0, B to broker 1, C to broker 2. Again, D to broker 0, E to broker 1, F to broker 2. Again, G, H, I. So you can see broker 0 has this A, D, G because it is round robin fashion. So now if you look at the whole message, the whole message is A, B, C, D up to H. 
but that that data is distributed among three brokers so this is what happens in the real world so if you are expecting huge amount of data right uh, and naturally it will be so because there'll be big data and there'll be so many producers sending to the same topic you define as many partitions as you want so that the data will be sprinkled across the brokers equally the data will be sprinkled i'm using the term right and and by default like i said it is a round robin fashion so what the web server is going to do like i said one message goes to broker zero second to broker one third to broker two again broker zero broker one broker two but you can change this now we don't want to get into too much complications related to this but as of now this is enough so by default it is the round robin fashion but it can be changed how the data has to be distributed among three brokers can be changed but as of now for our understanding this is fine right so this is what you call partitions so partitions help kafka to scale the topic beyond a single broker that's the definition to scale a topic beyond a single broker use partitions right and partitions are very common in production because naturally the size of data is huge and now a question will naturally arise which is like okay uh, so now the uh, uh, problem is solved because we are storing the data in three machines or if you have 10 partitions then 10 machines 10 brokers it is fine now what if one of the broker goes down how does kafka uh, enforces fault tolerance right so this is also taken care by kafka so when you are defining a topic you can also define something called replication now in my topic called web i have defined replication factor to be two and what that actually means is that you know each partition will be replicated to another broker now look at broker zero you have adg in blue and there is a adg in red on broker one so there is a replica now you can you can decide how many copies you want so i set it to two it can be three four five any number depending on the level of fault tolerance you're expecting uh, but the idea is uh, even if let's say broker zero goes down you will be able to read from broker one because there is a replica so when you are creating a topic you have to give a name for the topic then you have to give number of partitions supported by the topic so that it can span across multiple brokers you can also set a replication so that each partition will will be replicated to another broker so this is how you have to approach kafka right um, and and so i hope this is very clear to you so we have discussed about topics first uh, they basically help you to isolate messages and queue them so that producers and consumers can read them and how do you avoid the bottleneck issue of all the data for a topic storing in a single broker that's where partitions comes into picture and how do you en enforce fault tolerance that is when replication comes into picture so i hope all this is clear to you thank you i hope you really enjoyed this video consider clicking the like button and also let us know in the comments what do you think about this video and some of the other videos that you want us to come up with also check out our entire itversity youtube channel we have so much content on data engineering generative ai hands-on tutorials and much more so this is Raghu signing off. I'll see you with another video next time. Thank you.